The foam piece, guys, is just for my demonstration. Oh. That's all it is. It, it, no, it's a four. It's a four foot stick. So I have I have an actual piece right here. So that is that's what it looks like, and it'll fit anything from a two twelve to a sixteen twelve. Wow. So it's a um, very durable piece. Uh, it comes with a box and uh, a bag of nails. So you know these. These guys love this this thing now, and it's really taken off. Uh, really, all it was, all we changed for the most part. It's the same plastic, the same strong plastic. Um, it's just a little bit more flexible um, because we took out some of the internal baffling and we replaced it. Um, so what that's for is the weather protection. Uh, so what we replaced it with were these little posi tabs that actually um, there's little tabs all the way around. You should be able to see on that piece um, that kind of step in and, and serve as the, the weather protecting internal baffling that we have there. Uh, what that's going to do is basically block any water or anything from infiltrating. Um, it runs flush with any shingle that's up there. Once you nail it in and once it's in place, you're not going to get any wavy looks with our products. If you see, if you look up there and it's waving, it's really not a good product up there. Um, it's going to be one of the competitors, uh, and I've, you know, all of them kind of differ. There's some, there's some good ones out there, but uh, there's some that when, when they're shingle manufacturer, that, that they're there to make shingles. But when they come out with ventilation products, it's not really a product they care about. So um, things to kind of look out for, because some of those say say that they're doing a lot more than they're doing, but they're really not. Um, but this is what we're selling out here, and this is really what you're going to see more of. Uh, it's a good, it's a great product, and I mean, nobody is, I've not gotten one phone call saying, hey, I don't like this, this is doing this, or this cracked or broke. I mean, I've stepped on out on other people's uh, <coughs> uh, roof vent before, and it's just cracked. And so, uh, you just got to be careful. Um, but, uh, so I know you're not, I know you're not supposed to mix them, but like, bridge vents and gable vents. No. So what you want to do there, really, realistically, is throw a little plastic sheeting or some sort of thing to block that gable vent, because those are two exhaust vents that are essentially right next to each other. And so what's going to happen is the higher product is going to try to pull from the lower product. And so that gable vent is designed to exhaust air, not bring air in. So you're going to that's going to lead you to. I don't think it had any intake in. though. I think it's just cables. I would, I would, I would recommend blocking those things. Is that about a looper bit? On the, just a gable. I know, sorry, like a gable. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. to, to, fix it, to fix it, the contract, the roofer should come install uh, software. Software. Yes. That fixes the problem. All these houses, the gable would fill. The gable would fill. The gable would fill. The gable would fill. Yeah, so that's what. So that's. nice when you go in there. So now yeah, you're, you're standing right there and it's like high view and the air's flowing. Yeah, right. it's, <laughs> it's not down there. You know? So, I mean, it's real common nowadays when they reroute the house, they go ahead and put the ridge vent on there. So, seeing gables and ridge vents, you see them all the time. Yeah. I see some of them, they've actually gone in and closed off the gables with thermal ply or something. And put, and put soffits? Uh, no. <laughs> so, now, now they just have a ridge vent? I'm telling you, it's the main problem. There's no soffit. The main problem with any house I've ever seen is there's no soffit. There's something blocking the soffit. Um, yeah, so, I mean, gable vents, uh, uh, static vents like 750, power vents, turbines, all of those are exhaust vents. And if you got two products like that, you want to make sure you block one up. I mean, maybe don't install a ridge vent if you want to keep the gable. But most homeowners are happy with just blocking the gable up and keeping the look from the outside. And then you create, you create soffit. Some, some soffit to, to open it up. So basically how a ridge vent works, guys, is um, you're going to have a exterior baffle, an interior baffle, which is this little posi tab, and also these little jagged lines from the inside. Um, and then you have omni baffles along the side in case the wind changes and blows that way. Uh, so what you're basically doing is I'm, I've got some wind blowing on this side of the house, and you're creating uh, negative pressure over here that exhausts the air out of the, out of the, uh, the attic. Um, so, if I can find my little clicker. 
So that air hits that hits that baffle right there and there's air. So again, this is a static vent. It's not going to move it as fast as the turbine, um, but it's still a great product, especially when it's lined all the way down. There's plenty of enough feet of it. So um, sometimes I kind of uh, yeah. Uh, sometimes what you'll see is I'm sure y'all seen it a lot. Uh, homeowner, not homeowner, roofer goes in and, and puts ridge vent on every ridge on, in the house, on top of the roof. Every hips, single ridge. Hips, everything. Uh, on the hips, yep. everything. So a hip ridge vent is <laughs> not good. That's, and, and a lot of people are out there saying, yeah, you can do it. You can get away with it. Yeah, it, 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 go to it looks good. Uh, how in the world does that ridge vent know when it's an exhaust or an intake? And it's just kind of one of those products that's out there. And it, it's, it, I would advise not to use it. We don't have any hip bridge vent. I know other people do. Um, if you see that, just know that that thing doesn't know when it's when it's bringing air in and putting air out. So not a good product there. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, especially when they run it all the way down. Um, uh, but other than other than that. Um, would you would you mind just doing it again one time with the soffits open? I want to see how it does. You know, because they you always Is say that one open. No, it's no. Open. I open this one over here. They always say that's the best soffits and ridge vents. And that's pretty good. That's kicking butt. That's pretty good. What is the NFA per foot on that? I'm, on your ridge vent? It's uh, it's fourteen. You want me to do it again? Do it again. That was fun. It's seven. It's seventy-two per four feet. Seventy-two per four feet. Per four feet. Seventy-two square inches per four feet. So per piece. That's per piece. Okay. Um. So I mean, this is this is probably. Before I started, 750s were our best seller. Now this is this is our best seller. This is what we sell the most of. This is what's. I mean, everybody likes ridge vent. Um, so back to the on each ridge though. If you put ridge vent everywhere, if you throw it on dormers. Um, if you see ridge vent on a dormer, it's okay to keep it, but lock that dormer off and make your own little attic space. Uh, make sure there's a little soffit or something there to create that air to move. Um, you, a lot of people don't do that. It's just, it, it really kind of creates an issue. Uh, not just with dormers, with garages. Um, garages, literally, you want to create a separate attic space if it's not connected, or if it even if, even if it is connected to the attic space. So if you, if you have multiple ridges, like you said, multiple elevations, you don't want, you don't want ridge on the wall. No. No, so... Usually what people do is they find out the footage of Richmond that they need for that attic and they put it everywhere and it and it fits. But what you want to do is if you don't have enough footage, then you want to use a different product completely. Richmond's not the product for that house. There's a picture in here with a hip hip with a hip roof and they're putting they're putting kind of the right product. I don't I don't know exactly what they are, you can't really tell. They look like dome vents, uh, maybe power vents on page 19. Um, and they just bundle them together. Um, what you want to do there is bring those exhaust vents down and create a line of them in the, in the same line. Instead of having them stack. Instead of having them stack. Just, I mean, just like that. You don't want, you don't want that at all. So these are all. I mean, I, I've, I've been all over this book today, but uh, kind of on page 18 is kind of a picture, a good picture on the top left with the with the garage there. Uh, there is an actual picture. I think it's the next page on 20 or 21. Yes, it's 22. The 21's got the dormers, so that's a good visual for you guys to see. Just put like some sort of sheeting or something to block that dormer off and create a new attic space. Which one are you looking at? Which book are you? Same book. This one here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, and listen, I may have. 
You may have a different uh, book. I do. Just, just yeah, kidding. that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I, which I mean, one do you, you have? Because they, they so they, they send me these booklets and sometimes they're just they're, some of them are off and they're missing so, a page. But, I'm, so, I'm sorry. So on that dormer because it's lower. It, if it's all in one attic there, it becomes like an intake? Yes, because it's lower than that, that, that highest exhaust. So, rule of thumb is three feet in between, you want at least three feet in between your, your intake and your exhaust. Is what you want. But, you, it, you're not going to be three feet. That's super close in my opinion. Um, but if it's a dormer and it's about five, ten feet off the, off the roof, off the, the ridge, and you want to do something about that because what that that initial ridge vent is going to do is try to go grab air from that from that ridge rather than pull it from the soffits. Yes, it's going to. They're lazy products. They grab whatever is closest. Whatever's closest. That yep. makes sense. So like that bunched hip roof, that yeah. picture. Sure. They're feeding off of each other because they're all bunched up around each other, and the, the one that's on top is feeding from the one on bottom, and there's just no airflow. Is good, so is it a good idea to go ahead and install that? Uh, Early bird right there in the valley. In the where? <laughs> in the in, valley? Ignore the valley. Did you ask a good question? He doesn't I have any. Sure, because I always use Jesse. And don't I be, say, don't hey, be Billy. I, see it. I think I see an issue. You might want to check with the manufacturer if they say they like it. You've seen a turbine in the valley? Yep. Yeah. Leak like a sieve. Brand new valley. <laughs> I can't believe it. I don't know why your product didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's the product's fault. It was your product. <laughs> Hey, can you please come look at this? Um, it's, not, it's not working. It's leaking like crazy. <laughs> I think it's something wrong with the turf. If you have this class with the roof and every once in a while, it takes 30 minutes. Just come look at it for a second, and you're going to know exactly how to do it. So, so this goes back to an S. Who in here calls it out when you see different? Because we see it all the time. We see different. <laughs> different yeah. things. Different products. Right? Different products. <laughs> you make a note of it? But yeah, but I don't tell what they need to do to fix it. I just tell that that's not going to work as well as they want it to. And that's pretty much it. Cool. So you want one type of product Take there. a note? Deficient? I don't say note. I just put that it's incorrect. And it costs right. ventilation. Problems. Ventilation incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> Any so what, would, so what, so what would be their next step? The, the homeowner has to do something and say something? They'll just say, duly noted. Nobody has to do anything. <laughs> That's Trust me, board. I get called plenty with issues. Yeah. And, and there, it, it's, it's so funny how many times I go up there and I'm like, yeah, this isn't my problem. <laughs> That's why it's not working. I was like, I'm going to help you, but you've got to put my product on your house. But Anyway, it just happens that way. It's just Flamenco's got the brand, and, and I don't know if it's just my my information's out there because I'm around all the time or whatever it is. I'm easy to access, but uh, but yeah, guys. I mean, y'all have all the information um, that you're gonna need, and I will, if you want my card, I'll give you my card, and y'all can call me anytime and ask, shoot me a text, say hey, or shoot me a picture, and say hey, look, I just saw this. What do I need to at least write on here and say what I need to do? Oh, I have you, go ahead, Jesse. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, have you uh, got any opinion on whether or not radiant barrier decking has any positive or negative impact on attic ventilation? I'm, I'm going to say negative, but I don't have anything to back that up because it's kind of new, and I don't even know if Lamanco has like a good suggestion if it's mm -hmm. if it's actually hurting or helping the roof. Um, that's a question that I've gotten before. Um, and to be honest, I, I still don't even know. I've asked, and, I'm, and it's, it's, it's something that's I've had a little different builders, for me. I've had some new builders tell me that they don't need as much attic ventilation on the roof exfiltration uh, because they have radiant barrier decking, which in my opinion, that has nothing to do with it. I don't think it has anything to do with it. You're still getting your moisture, and you're still getting your air vapor and every yeah. moisture laden yeah. vapor coming in. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, one no, I've heard it because before. they're only thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, they're thinking about it. Yeah. 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 Ken makes the mistake of actually talking to the <laughs> <laughs> Ken actually slowed no. down. Yeah. He, <laughs> he believes that. Yeah. Um, yeah. On one of the rare occasions that I was doing a free drywall and there were actually plans on site, one of the pages looked like, if I remember correctly, a ventilation plan. And it, it prescribed what vents went where on the roof. And so, do 
do you guys have any part in kind of advising the builders in that, uh, or is that the architect? I've done that for several contractors in my area, uh -huh. and, and it's not me, but if I what happens is, is they call me, and if it's somebody that I know that we can write up for, yeah. I'll call our engineers and they'll write up a, okay. they'll send us a plan, like a custom home of the house, of a custom house or something. They're like, hey, this is what we're thinking, this is kind of what the homeowner wants to use. Can y'all make this work, or can we make this work? And I literally shoot it over to uh, our engineers and they write up a plan and they send it out, send it to me and I send it to them. So the second part of the question is, especially your engineer, is there a standard or a kind of a guideline or a bible, if you will, that you guys refer to when it comes to this ventilation? Or is it just what work and trial and testing? Like a like like a full like a perfect plan A to ventilating a house. Yeah, I mean right? is there like, you know, something that we could refer to or point to to say this is why these multiple vents is incorrect, because this standard says you shall not do that. There's I don't know if there's anything I could like send you. No, I'm just curious. Yeah, I don't. I, I haven't had that to where. I mean, I can absolutely get you a a like a engineer's legitimate, you know, letter or something that says this is this is what works, and I can guarantee that this works. The reason why I ask is because it's, because if yeah. we don't have a reference or standard, we can often fall back on a manufacturer spec. But if we're looking at Ross products, yeah. we can't really refer. To so what you told us, yeah. you know, and it's just got to, I mean, we can still say whatever we want, but yeah. it's nice to have some concrete, you know, I mean, especially with builders when you're dealing with I can tell you that even with other products, it's going to be hard to, to really, because you would have to sit there and find out yes. what their product is like compared to this, my product, because you're going to have to compare it to mine. But that, that app and, and the slide rule and stuff is going to get you the adequate ventilation that you need. I guess the point I'm getting at is, is and I'm, I'm fully in agreement with what, everything you're saying here, yes. is if we on a new construction say, well, because we see it all the time, you can't have this, you know, 750 down at the E, you can't have these box vents and this ridge vent, you know, we have nothing to point to to tell the show the builder that he's doing something other than this. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I guess we could show that. I, but the builders, they're not going to be pressure at all to change anything. Well, you know, now that y'all have heard my, y'all yes. basically heard my seminar, y'all can call the Manco and get a cert certificate to be a ventilation expert. Uh, well, no. And so maybe you can, I mean, it's a legitimate, I, nobody ever does that, but you can absolutely, you can absolutely do it. I mean, you, can, you can pull that card out and you can say, hey, look, I'm a ventilation expert. This is exactly how it's supposed to be done. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's something, but yeah, there, I, there's not anything that I could I could send you or <clears> other than a than an engineer's you know work basically. No, um, I just they they made these there. products and they created them and they know exactly how it works and how how that that house is supposed to be them. Um, Maybe ask a different way. Do you have any like case studies or anything like that? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, that's probably something I could grab um, from those guys from what they did while they were making the products. I'm going to be um, building a new house in a couple of years if you need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> we can get one going and burn it. All the there, walls there, are there, crooked right. and everything. There's, <laughs> there's things there. I can ask for. It, like It's just a different kind of, uh, I guess, trying to find something like that that would say, um, you've got that product up there and it looks ventilated properly. This is this is why it's ventilated. Uh, when you talk to builders, do you get a like look sometimes or do you actually no there's times where they're, they're, they're like wait what no that's but not you're right talking to no what you get is somebody stands up and goes no 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 i did the, like i've been doing it like this for 20 years right. and and this is how i do it <laughs> do you get a lot of that oh yeah yeah and, and, and what can i hey, what can i do i mean i'm i'm sitting there and i'm like oh this is how it's supposed to be done i'm not gonna get an argument with the guy right but you know i don't want to tell him how to do his business but right. you know at the same time i'm here to try to teach you something sure and there is a point to be had and you you got to get somewhat close to it if you want to do it right. Sure. So, um, yeah. You're not speaking to builders, though. You're probably speaking to purchasing. By the time it gets out to the field, they have no freaking clue what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I talk to, I'll, I'll talk to the whole office, you know, the, the, the guys that are, are really kind of pushing products. You know, those are the guys that I, I really would like to talk to. Um, but for the most part, the more people that can come in and listen to me, I mean, it's, it's going to be better for them. So what do, you and, do with, what do you do when you go out and you see someone installing your product in production style? 
Well, usually by the time I come out there, I, I'm, uh, it's already messed up and I'm trying to fix it. I'm, or I'm not trying to fix it, but I'm trying to tell them how to fix it. Um, yeah, I don't ever, I, if I'm going out there to look at a house, they're calling me saying, hey, this is what's going on. Come take a look real quick and, and figure out what we can do. Um, never really out there seeing it install. Uh, not since I was slinging shingles uh, in high school. You know? So it's, um, yeah, it's a little bit different. I'm, I, when, I'm, when I'm working and moving around, I'm, I'm traveling my territory, seeing my distributors and contractors and stuff, and usually seeing them in, in, in the office or at lunch or something. Like that, you know? But it's, uh, Talk to us briefly about that deck here, Ben. Yeah. Do you have a question? I did. I yeah. just wanted to ask real quick on that on that page 21 where you had you know two cables sitting here running beside each other, gable ridge fence yeah. running beside each other. What is that elevation that you're recommending? You got a note down there. Let me see exactly because you got the different you got the odd book with <laughs> that, little note, that little note right down there says it may be desirable to separate the attics, you know, with plastic sheet. Is there a, is there a does Lamanco engineers have an elevation? Like if it's five, four, or something like that. Well, there's, there's, yeah, three feet. I said three, yeah. feet, is three feet is okay. the is the legitimate difference there should be between an exhaust and an intake. At least three. Feet. At least three feet. Uh, at, at least, least three. At least three feet. But you want it more than that. But but if you're using more than, or if you're using both of those elevations for exhaust. Though, what's the distance that they? Should you don't want to use both those for exhaust. So you, if it's the same attic space. Like okay. I said, if it's if it's different elevations and you got rich in a different area. That right there, that, that's the example that I'm talking about, where you got another gable van here, you got a gable on both of these. You but create your the own whole, attic there. Huh? You create your own attic there. So then that's the about dropping plastic then on this side. Yeah, then the three feet goes it's it's its own attic space, so it doesn't matter anymore. You know what I'm saying? There doesn't it's okay if it's not three feet apart. If it's closer than that's three feet. If they drop the plastic part. They if they drop the plastic. If they if they don't drop the plastic this is not a this is not a recommended installation. No. No. And what is that vertical dip what is that vertical difference from this ridge to this ridge? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's closed you off. Take out the lower from it can, I understand that, but if it's not closed off, if it's not closed off, you want to have that conversation with the builder. Uh, you've got your you know, you're fourteen foot high on this ridge over here, you're eight foot over here. You sit here. there and tell that guy you tell the guy say your main ridge vent is gonna try to pull air out of right. out of the dormer ridge vent. And it's going to create uh, infiltration, however, over, over the next five years. You know, dust, whatever, insects, anything. Right. It's going to try to pull stuff through that through that in, that ridge vent, and that ridge vent is not intended to be pulled. Through. Right. Yeah. And I, I think that's how you would explain it. I think, um, and you just tell them it's it's an easy fix. You just throw a plastic sheet and you create your own attic. You know. Um, so anyway, uh, deck here. So this is our other product. Uh, product that maybe you sounds like you can see in a lot of. So this, just like our ridge vent, is a four foot stick. And so what this was made for was for was to be an intake product, right? Um, but it's actually a hybrid product. You can use it as an exhaust as well, um, depending on where you put it on the roof. Um, and so, I mean, several people, if there's a um, say a, a, a slope that feeds into a wall and you've got a higher roof with a separate attic space, people will run this product all the way up against the, uh, against the wall, cut that ridge line, cut a ridge, a, a ridge line out of the deck, and you set this on top and put the shingles on top, and there's little, there's little stoppers here that, that literally allow the starter, if it's an intake, or, or just regular shingles to stop, and the piece that you will see when it's all said and done, is you'll see this little piece right here, and everything else is covered. What's the cutout required on that? Four inch? It's it's like an it's like oh, I think it's a little over an inch. Oh. So that's your, I mean it literally is all labeled oh, on here. Right yeah, here. this is it. Oh. Okay. That's your cut line. Yeah. What's the NFA on that per foot? It's 36. 36 total. Yeah. 36 per four per four feet. Okay. Yeah. So eight inch. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's a little bit less. If you can see, I mean, it's 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 not as much air. And then there's a screen. So there's a screen as well um, that's inside uh, to prevent insects or anything else from getting in. Um, and to be honest, that's what you want your screen to look like, not like that that other stuff. Uh, a little thin screen that literally is there for insect protection. And any it's, and it, the holes are small enough to where nothing else can get, really get in either. 
And plus with this product, it would have to travel upwards to get in through that cut hole. So if you can see, the hole would be right here, and the air is coming in here and traveling up. Um, really good picture in there on page 17. Yeah, 17, I think. Um, really cool thing with this product that y'all might see too. Uh, there's cut lines on it um, that you can barely see. You have to see up close. And you literally cut this piece and you will remove the triangle. If y'all can see that, I don't know. There's a cut line right here. And if you cut it, remove this piece, you and you take this piece, piece and you slide it over, it'll create a, a runoff. Right. Um, it's kind of just for a look. Some people like it. Um, and that's on that picture as well. Um, but pretty cool little hybrid product that we're using that we're selling. Um, so to properly use it, um, I'd say the best use for this product is for re-roof, for if you run across insulation or no soffit or no intake at all, um, I'd use this product. Uh, you know, for whoever's trying to put it up in the middle of the roof or towards, you know, way too far up, um, I'd say make sure that either that lower area is blocked off in some way, or I, I it needs to be blocked off that if, it's, if it's that far up. If it's like that example on that page, um, you want to you wanna make sure, like that, that install, install right there is literally intended for soffit, or something is blocking, and you've got to create some sort of opening. There's no eave or something like that. That's what you want to use that, that install for. Um, anything else, it's best to put it down at the lower, down at the edge of the roof. How big is the opening in the decking? It's, it's that size. So that that's the cut hole. That's and then you literally you don't cut it right. You don't cut the piece there. You literally set the piece on the top, and then everything else goes on top. So something a little bit newer, and you know, it sounds like maybe some people just. They like the product, and but maybe they don't know how to use it properly. Um, they like to shingle over it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so who knows? Um, and, but that goes back to the contractor, in my opinion, and you know, that's that, that would be his his problem, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, best install for this product is put it down to the lower part of the roof and treat it as a intake. Um, Does it have any application for an exhaust? Yeah, it's a, it, it does work as an exhaust. Um, it's just if you, you would use this situationally, kind of like kind of like what I was saying. If you have a slope that feeds up to a wall that has a separate attic space, and so you need to create some wall sort of on the outside. Yes. Okay. You can run that up there and create an opening. If anything, you're just opening it up, and it'll 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 exhaust air. Okay. Um, kind of a different way to use it, but people do that, and I've literally had. Customers of mine use it that way. So, so if we wanted to buy any products, we have to order them through a distributor, you or somebody local? Distributor. Distributor. Most distributors in town carry. Who's your distributor right here? Like, uh, I mean, almost all of them. Um, so, like uh, ABC, West End, RSGs, at Southern Shingles, Spec. Those are all my customers and my day to day customers. Uh, uh, and most of all, most of my main products are in all of them. Well, um, I mean, uh, like, say we were doing some work on our house, wanted to put these heat, where could we buy them? Yeah, I, I, I would go to, I, I'd go oh, to. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't recognize, I thought those were roofing companies that you sell to the name. No, they will, they will sell you my products. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah, you walk in there like a, like a Ace Hardware, like a Lowe's, uh, Lowe's does carry some of my products and stuff, but what I'm saying is, is you would walk in there the same way and they'll, they'll give you what you need.